Welcome to the Tiny Tutor. You guys, this is getting crazy. It is like a hundred degrees. We are in the state of New Jersey. Mommy's hometown, where I was born and raised. This is the third and final part of our tri-state adventures. We have come to you from Philadelphia. We've come to you from New York City, and now we're coming to you from New Jersey. So we're in the little town of Allentown, New Jersey. And we're gonna read um, a little story before we head to the airport and head back to Los Angeles. What's the difference between fiction and nonfiction? Fiction is fake. It means like it's just a fake story. It's made up. It's fun and it's made up, right? Remember the elephant and piggy story we read where we talked about comprehension? That was for fiction. Fake stories, right? Today we're gonna talk about comprehension for nonfiction. What is nonfiction? If fiction is fake, that's the trick parents, fiction is fake, Nonfiction is the opposite of fake. What's the opposite of fake? Um, the opposite of fake is real. Real. So today we're going to read you a story that is real. It's about a real person. And we got to talk a little bit about this book because it is our favorite book. Our absolute favorite book. And we've been posting about it before. What's it called, Mac? Good Night Stories for Rebel Girls. <gasps> we love this book so much. There is a volume two, which we are about to get when we finish volume one. Um, we read it every night before bed. It's about awesome, fearless, brave, smart, what else, women? I have no idea. Amazing women. We're gonna read this one today because when we were at the Museum of Art in Philadelphia, there was a display about her, right? Did we see her portraits? Yeah. Great. So we're gonna read this um, nonfiction story. And I love this, uh, parents, because it's great before bed. It's just, you can do one or two a night. Um, here's how we do nonfiction comprehension. Here's how the tiny tutor likes to do it. It's called K-W-L. K stands for, what do you know? W stands for, what do you want to know? And L stands for, what have you learned? Learn. So here's the most important thing. You have to do the K and the W before you read, and then you do the L after you read, because you don't know what you've learned until you've read it, right? It's a nice way to guide your kids reading so that they have something that they're actively looking for. And it also sets up context before they read. If they don't know K, anything about it, that's a silent K by the way, um, that's okay too. But you might wanna start with um, a book, a nonfiction uh, piece about something they already know. What do you already know about Frida Kahlo? Um, she's a painter. She's a painter, she's still alive? No. no. She's a painter, do you know anything else about her? She made it, married another painter, but you're not sure who that is. Okay. So those are the two things you know. That she, or three things. She's no longer alive. She was a painter, and she married another famous painter. What do you want to know? What I want to know is when she was born okay. and where she lived. And where she lived. Do you also want to know the name of the famous painter she married? Yes. Okay. So we're going to look for three things as we're reading. One, where she was born. When she was born. Two, where she lived. Three, the name of the famous painter she married. Those are the three things we're going to look for. Once upon a time. In a bright blue house near Mexico City lived a small girl called... Frida Kahlo. We're gonna share and read this because it's a little too hard for Mac to read by herself. So, yeah. She would grow up to be one of the most famous... Painters. ...of the 20th century. That means of the 1900s. But she almost didn't grow... She almost didn't grow up at all. You can make predictions along the way. Why didn't she almost grow up at all? What do you think happened? Because um, she had a Let's find out. When she was? Six. The same age you are now, 16, no, six. She nearly died from polio. This is a disease we don't have anymore, Mac. The disease left her with a permanent limp. She couldn't walk very well. But that didn't stop her from? Painting. No, well, that too. Hold on, we'll get there. Playing, swimming, and wrestling, just like all the other kids. Did she like to play? Did she have any fears? No, she liked to wrestle, even though she had polio. Then, when she was 18, she was involved in a terrible bus accident. She almost died again. And again, she spent months in bed. Her mother made her a special easel so that she could paint while lying down for more than anything else, Frida loved to paint. Why did her mom give her that special easel? So she could paint while she was laying 
Why was she lying in bed? She had a bus accident when she was 18. That was the second terrible thing that happened to her. When she was six, she had a disease called polio. And she survived both of them. Why? Because she's awesome and the world needed to see her painting, right? And did we find out the answers to our, our, our answer to our third question about who she married? No. Let's keep reading. But we did find out how she got started painting, right? Good, here we go. As soon as she was able to walk again, she went to see Mexico's most famous artist, Diego Rivera. Are my paintings any good, she asked him. Her paintings were amazing. What were they, bold, bright, and? Beautiful. Good, he fell in love with them, and he fell in love with Frida. Diego and Frida got married. There it is. High five, we found the answer. Who did Frida Kahlo marry? What famous um, painter? Diego Rivera, and I believe you used him as inspiration for one of the paintings you painted this year at school. They got married, he was a big man in a large floppy hat. She looked tiny beside him. People called them the elephant, elephant and, and the dove. dove. Why did people call them the elephant and the dove? Because um, Frida Kahlo was very small. And he was very big. big. We figured out what we wanted to know. What did we learn about Frida that we didn't know before? who she married, Diego Rivera, another famous painter. They fell in love when he went, she went to show him her paintings, right? What else did we learn about Frida Kahlo? She was born in Mexico in 1907. Well, she died in 1954. And what kind of paintings did she do for her? She did um, self portraits. Self portraits with what in the background? Uh, is her house still standing? Yes. Yeah. It's the house where she lived in. What color is her house? Blue. Bright blue. Just like the bright blue of her here. Yay! And then we always finish our Rebel Girls with the quote, Feet, what do I need you for when I have wings to fly? What does it mean? What do you think she meant? I don't need feet when I can fly. She survived two really hard things. And she went on to be this very famous painter and a very inspirational woman. What does it mean to fly? Does that mean she can actually fly in the sky? It means she can do anything. anything she wants to do. Say goodbye to New Jersey and the beautiful lake behind us in Allentown, New Jersey. Thank you for joining us on our tri-state on location, guerrilla style shooting journeys. I hope you can even see us on this video. Oh. And we'll see you back in Los Angeles.